Hello, this is Eric Akopian, your host of CivilNet, and we're honored to be joined today by uh, Zahra Sinanian, the High Commissioner of Diaspora uh, for the Republic of Armenia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sinanian, for joining us this thank afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, obviously, uh, you're from the diaspora and you deal with diasporans, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually a diaspora myself, just like you. And uh, one of the most common questions that we get is, uh, and I'm sure you've gotten it too, what can I do? I'm a person in uh, Los Angeles, in Buenos Aires, in Moscow, in Beirut, or in Tehran. Uh, what's your answer to that? What should people do on the ground immediately right now? Yes, no matter where our uh, brethren and our brothers and sisters in the diaspora reside, there's a role for them to play. The most practical thing to do, of course, is to contribute to Armenia Fund through himnadram.org and uh, thereby make it possible for us to uh, take care of those numerous expenses that are associated with this war. Um, everyone can contribute, you know, different people can, can contribute at different amounts, but no doubt that uh, folks can spare a cup of tea or a cup of coffee in the morning. But of course, I want uh, our uh, compatriots in the diaspora to realize that the, the expense is uh, enormous, it's indescribable. And We'd love everyone to feel, um, to, to really get in tune with the sacrifice mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the uh, armed forces especially in Armenia are making. And really today, Armenia, all of it is, uh, is a war camp. Everyone's doing their part and diaspora should as well. And the urgency of the situation is uh, of the uh, utmost importance. I think... Uh I usually do the question, I usually do just the questions here, but in rare occasions I think it's, a, you know, I inter interject myself and mm -hmm. I will say something that you perhaps don't want to say is I will ask people, uh, give till it hurts. In fact, it has to hurt. It has to hurt. I want you to give, uh, if you were going to go to Las Vegas this weekend, don't go and give that money. If you were going to buy that handbag, don't buy it and give it. Uh, you need, uh, this is no longer about giving, it's about sacrifice. Uh, so I would ask people to uh, join the High Commissioner's action plan by going further. Uh, it's not enough to be, to do the least, we have to do the most. So uh, I appreciate your comments. Uh, one thing that a lot of people who are not here uh, don't know is the particular there, there's been a very unique atmosphere here over the last 10 days. It's obviously <laughs> negative in many ways because nobody, unless you're insane, you don't like war. Uh, but there's a level of mobilization, there's a level of activity, and there's a level of people coming together that people who are not here at this point don't understand that. Can you speak of that and maybe explain that a little bit? You know, I've been actually thinking about that a lot as well. Uh, I've as a conscious human being, I've, I've lived through the first Artsakh war and then there were several clashes including the major April uh, 2016 clash and of course I was mentally very vested during those uh, during those war episodes or the wars uh, but being here and residing in Armenia is a very different feeling because you actually know the people who are fighting on the front and you dread every morning hearing about one of them having fallen. So that, that feeling is very different. So to build on that, the, the mobilization and the coming together is unprecedented by, uh, by any means. And, and uh, folks who have lived through these wars in Armenia are testifying to that effect. Uh, you know, no, n never in the past would you have folks actually going and fighting and arguing at the mobilization centers to be sent to the front. There are dozens and dozens and uh, th thousands of men who are not being allowed to the front for one reason or another, and um, they're upset because of this reason. It's very remarkable. Uh, also, one more thing that we're witnessing is the uh, volunteers, uh, folks from the diaspora who aren't merely watching from far away, being effective, contributing, engaging in political activity, but actually physically coming to Armenia. Those numbers are very large, and again, they're not heeding someone's call. They're not waiting for an invitation. They're not being called up. They're buy most of them are buying tickets and just flying out on the first flight that they can catch. Yes, I'm, I'm glad you 
gave a glimpse of what we see here on a daily basis. Uh, there are some people, and I've even gotten these emails myself, from some people in their 60s, in fact. I want to volunteer. I want to come there and volunteer. Do you have the capabilities? Are there the structures that can take advantage of people coming here? Obviously, different people have different capabilities. Does that exist, or is that, is that even realistic? Um, it does exist. Uh, obviously, um, you know, without getting into too much detail, people have different uh, skill sets and people can be useful in, in various ways. I mean, uh, being engaged in war and, and defending your homeland doesn't necessarily mean uh, shooting and actually engaging in, in combat activities. It can mean anything from digging a trench to engaging in cyber warfare or defending our cyberspace. So the spectrum of, of engagement in, in the war is really broad and, and everyone has a role to play. Okay. Uh, the, we have seen uh, all over television, uh, especially in Los Angeles, just a mass action uh, of the type that frankly mirrors some of the other social movements in uh, the United States at this point, which is rather interesting crossover. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your view of that and is that something that uh, you think is effective? You think is that something you encourage? Uh, obviously we're all talking about nonviolent action but direct action. Uh, what do you what is your take of that? You know we, uh, we, you and I come from a culture where um, mass rallies and political activism is, is a way of life and it's become apparently in the United States it's become more of a way of life since we've, since we've left. <laughs> but but uh, having said that, what's remarkable is the world's absolute silence on what's happening. You, mm -hmm. When you watch the videos of Stepanakir being cluster bombed, or you watch 300 millimeter Smerch uh, missiles slamming into downtown Stepanakir and the utter destruction that it's causing, and the silence that's deafening from the Western world, um, Given the fact that you know we are part of you know the sort of the Western civilization, we did just undergo a democratic revolution. You would think that there would be some empathy, some kind of action by the West, and and I'm talking about the West specifically right now. Uh, and there is there's been none, at least not a not a tangible one. And uh, going back to what our compatriots can do, uh, given the culture that exists in those countries that they reside in. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm being a foreign government official, I'm uh, very careful not to sort of call people to do certain things, but they should exercise all the rights that they have. They need to use all the levers that are available, all the tools in the tool set, because this is the most um, serious threat to our existence since 1915, no doubt about it. And you know, some people may say 1918. 1918 was just the continuation of 1915. We're at that juncture in our history where uh, either we're finally establishing our right to exist in this part of the world, in this tiny corner of our homeland that we've managed to salvage, or we're going to get wiped out. And the wipeout will be in different ways. You all hear that Azerbaijan's demands are nothing short of complete uh, depopulation of Artsakh. Uh, Azerbaijan's leader has on numerous occasions laid claim to Yerevan, to Sunik, to uh, Lake Sevan. Their appetite is um, insatiable. They want it all. And the Turks have shown that throughout history, that their absorption and the expansion at the expense of Armenian, the Armenian homeland has been a continuous process for the last thousand years. So they figure, why stop? Why allow for this barrier to exist between them, the Turkish Republic of Turkey, and their small little province called Azerbaijan. So exercise all your rights. That's within your rights. Do it and do it, do it in a lawful way, but do it in an impactful way. I think demonstrating in front of Glendale City Hall is at this point silly. It's silly. Everyone in Glendale knows what's going on and either they care or you're never going to change their mind. It has to be something much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll finish up with this last question. I was really watching uh, Aleyev on uh, Al Jazeera and he said something that I want you to respond to and he said something that I want to see if uh, the diaspora can respond to. Uh, he said that Armenia overstated its potential uh, and uh, 
frankly, given our isolation and the fact that we have no friends, he might actually have been correct on some level. Uh, tell me what's your response to that and what should be the diaspora's response to that? Aliyev has expressed his opinion. I'm sure that's an opinion that's shared broadly and widely in both Azerbaijan and Turkey. Now's the time to prove him wrong. Either he's right or he's wrong. I think he's wrong. I think we've underplayed our potential. I think we haven't fully utilized our potential. And we just need to show it to him. And God knows the men on the front line certainly believe that our potential is not fully realized yet. I, I think so. And I hope the diaspora engages fully, commits fully, commits to the point where it hurts. I love the way you phrased it. It has to hurt them because I'll tell you, Armenia right now is hurting all over. We're hurting bad. But it's not changing our attitude. It's not changing our mind. And neither should it, should it change theirs. Only, uh, it only should change their mind and realize that they need to hurt and only then they're fully engaged in this struggle. Well, Mr. Sinanian, I want to thank you for joining us and giving us a valuable time uh, in these critical junctures in our history. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, this was your host of Civil Rights Eric Kopian and thank you for joining us with this insightful conversation with uh, the Zara Sinanian, uh, Commissioner of, High Commissioner of the Diaspora. Thank you very much.